Great health is important. So important that we want it, not just for a while, but for the rest of our lives. So important, we want it not just for ourselves, but for our entire family. But great health is not easy to come by. In 2012, the Ministry of Health has released statistics that in Singapore, every five hours, there is one new diabetes patient. So at the end of our event today, there is one more. And this is not, uh, this is not surprising news. Sorry, that's last year, May. And in 2012, NUS released results showing that by the age of 69, one in three Singaporeans will have diabetes. And the UN in 2014 has predicted that in 2030, the cancer rates will rise from, 20, from 14 million to 21 million. It will actually rise by half. But at the moment, in many developed countries, already the cancer rate is going towards one in two. So look at the person next to you and say, it's either you or me. <laughs> well, but you know, that sounds like very bad and bleak news. But what I'm here to say, and for my talk today, I'm here to get everyone to think about health differently and to look beyond the surface, beyond what is usually in this conversation. So we're going to start by considering, and please join, please participate. Let's start by considering what do most people think about when told to take better care of their health? What do you think it takes to have better health and vitality? Now, I'm guessing many of you are having images such as these in your head right now. You might be thinking of physical activity, diet, and you might also be thinking of mindfulness. Now, all these things are very good. But in today's day and age, if we only rely on these for good health, then we are bound to be sorely disappointed. And I'm here to share with you something even more significant than all these things have uh, on our health. And come on, be honest, do we do all of these things? No, I'm sure all of us are very here honest with ourselves. But not only can people who do, uh, people not do all these things, but there's something more important. So maybe there's, there's this change that we need to make today. So come to consider this. This is the goldfish. Now, whatever it does, whether it's moving around, eating, or swimming, or sleeping, it's always in the same environment, the water. You can't take the goldfish out of its environment. And if it has to leave, if you want to bring your pet goldfish to your best friend's house, you need a bag and you need to fill it with water and put a goldfish inside. Now, we are actually the same as the goldfish. We cannot leave our environment, the air. And so that is why when astronauts go to outer space, they need to be in one of these things. They need to be in a spacesuit because outer space does not support life and the spacesuit needs to provide that life-giving environment. But the fact that we need air is not the only reason why it's important. Now consider air and compare it with the other things we take in every single day. We might drink two liters of water and we might eat two kilograms of food, depending on not whether you're at a buffet, right? But these two liters of water and two kgs of food, how does it compare when we look at air? So do you want to guess how much air we consume every single day? So let's take a deep breath now, okay, shall we? Let's do this together. Let's all take a deep breath and breathe out as if you're blowing into a balloon or a bag. And one more time, in and out. Now if you do this for one minute, you will have breathed in seven to eight liters of air. That makes in a day 11,500 liters of air. In one year, that's more than four million. And in our entire lifetime of 85 years, that will make 357 liters of air. And this is way, way more significant than that water or food that we've always been caring about. Most of us do not know that our skin actually interacts with the air around us. So we don't leave this environment that is filled with air, and our skin actually interacts with it. And the amount of air we interact with is so much more and dependent on where we go. So think about this. You know, everything that we do for health, what, what we eat, what we drink, and what we do, does it happen in air? But yet, we pay so little attention to it. So here's what I have to share with us every, you know, for, for today's key point. 
it is every something more important than whatever effort we put into health. A lot of us have this image when we talk about air, toxic air and polluted air. So yeah, we know this is bad for our health. But today, the images I have about air look more like these. These are places we spend our everyday life, and they look nice, don't they? You know, we actually spend time decorating our home, our office, and put a lot of money into it too. You know, today's talk, I won't be focusing on the harmful substances that exist in these environments. Um, I'm here to talk about that our body doesn't just need an absence of bad substances in the air. Our body actually needs nature. It's not just getting rid of the bad stuff, we need the good stuff. And when we think about nature, we are meant to be in it, we are designed to be in nature. But look at where we are today, look at where we are seated right now. We do not have nature, do we? This is where we live in. There is no nature. Now, the thing about nature is this, there is something in nature that is very important and vital to our body. And scientists have found out about them a long time ago. And they nicknamed, they nicknamed this invisible substance, vitamins in the air. Now, they are called vitamins in the air precisely because they are so essential, deeply essential in our lives and for our health. And we cannot do without it. So, you know, but, you know, let's make this a little more fun. I don't just want to give you the answer, right? So we're going to play a game, a guessing game, the common game, what am I? So I'm going to play the character of this vitamins, and you will guess what it is, okay? So here goes, right? I am naturally occurring. I am found most abundantly in forests and waterfalls. You absorb me directly from the air. 15% true breathing. But 85% through your largest organ, the skin. And that means I get directly into your bloodstream. And when I get into your bloodstream, I help you by purifying your blood, by improving cell metabolism, by raising and enhancing your immune system and balancing your autonomic nervous system, bringing about a multitude of physical benefits. What am I? Some people guess oxygen, we definitely need oxygen. But there's something more important than vitamins in the air. That's, it's actually called uh, anions, or simply put, negative ions. Now, to cut away at the complicated science, okay, I, I'm actually not good at science, I like weight, okay, but I'm going to make this really simple. Basically, atoms and molecules can lose or gain electrons. And when they do that, they become ions, they become called ions. And when their net charge, electrical charge, is negative, they are called negative ions. And when a net charge is positive, they are called positive ions. And research has shown that positive ions directly damage our bodies at the cellular level. But on the other hand, negative ions are extremely important for our bodily functions. Now, research for negative ions began long, long, long time ago. And um, most notably by Philip Leonard, and there's a Leonard effect named after him. And that's because he found out that at waterfalls or fountains, where water falls from a great height and hit other water droplets or a wet surface, it actually produced negative electric charge in that environment. And he's found that the environment is actually very, very attractive and very, very good for physiological benefits. So animals can be found near waterfalls. And after this discovery, lots more, thousands more paper has been done and many books have been written on the physiological benefits of negative ions. So it's, it's not something debatable already. It's really established. Now let's take a quick look and see what the effects are. I would like to ask all of us, have you ever consider your body, how it works? Or do we just, most of us, we just open our eyes and we wake up, we jump at the alarm clock and we just take our body wherever we want it to go? Actually, a lot of things has to happen for our body to work. Our blood has to be clean because our blood has to bring nutrients and water and oxygen to every single part of our body and remove the waste from there. And it can only do this when it's clean. Our entire body is made of cells. 
and negative ions is required for the cell membrane to be more permeable. And we would appreciate our body more when we realize how many cells there are in the body. Scientists have done the hard work of actually calculating. On the average, we have 37.2 trillion cells in our body. That's 372 and 11 zeros. Okay, I memorized that because I can't remember how many zeros in a trillion. But that's exactly how many, that's, that's so many cells in our body all needing to work properly in order for us to have this thing called health. And of course, our immune system is, you know, I don't, it doesn't need further elaboration. It's our number one and first defense against anything that could harm us. And our autonomic nervous system, you might not have heard of it very much, but it does everything that you don't do. What do I mean by you don't do? I mean, you take care of your health by exercising and brushing your teeth, things like that. These are things we do, but the autonomic nervous system takes care of everything that we don't consciously think of. From your digestive system, from your, other, uh, from your endocrine system, from our immune system even. So it's something that runs on its own. And when it works well, we are healthy. And when it doesn't, yeah, it really can give us bad health, like insomnia, pain, and digestive issues. So these, and these systems, they don't work individually on their own. Our body is a huge, inter, huge collection of interrelated systems. When there's a problem in one, usually there's a domino effect, and it affects other systems as well. Can you begin to see why scientists nickname negative ions vitamins in the air? Do they sound vital to you? Yeah. There are actually scientific conditions to fulfill for negative ions to take effect in our body. So first of all, we actually need to have it in high densities. You need a large amount, large concentration of it. And second of all, we have to have it all the time. And thirdly, it, this large concentration must be very close to our skin. Do you remember how many percent is absorbed through our skin? 85%. Give yourself a huge round of applause. <laughs> now, the problem is though, the problem is where we are living right now, where there's no nature, the environment does not support any of these conditions. Let's take a look at some statistics to see what the real picture is. So these are from uh, medical journals, from research. They found out the physiological effects of anions. So what, at what density it creates, what, what effects on our body. And we find that when that's a lot, high density means 100,000 to 500,000. Our body has natural self-healing ability. And, you know, above 5,000 is important for our body. And minimally, we need 1,000 for our body to maintain its healthy metabolism. For this thing, for this machine to work, we need at least 1,000. And the critical thing is less than 50, it induces physiological disorders. So this is quite critical. So let's see where we are in and where we can find negative ions. So as you can see in nature, at, mount, at waterfalls, mountains or seasides, you can have more than 5,000 to 50,000 negative ions. But as we move closer and closer and closer to the city, as we get more and more urbanized, there is less and less of it. And in, if you look at the, the areas here, you realize that in Singapore, in any urban city, we don't get a thousand. But what is the crux of the problem? It is this. We, at less than 50, it induces physical disorders, but this is where we spend, I would say, 90% of our time. We are in some room of some sort. If you're not in an office, if you're not in school, you're at a shopping mall, you're at a movie theater, or you're at home. So it is in this environment that we are living in right now. So when you consider, when we consider three things, first of all, the important functions that negative ions have in our body. Second of all, how much air we breathe in every day. And third of all, how much more air we live in. Can we see why there is a gross lack of health in our current situation and the statistics is amounting to a health tsunami. But for the biggest part of my life, I never knew this. For 30 years, I had been searching for help. I was in deep need of help ever since I was young. Before the age of four, I had contracted many 
you know, multiple respiratory illnesses, and I had immune system problems that led to debilitating eczema and psoriasis. And, you know, you, unless you've had it before, you cannot imagine a life that is filled with pain every single moment. That at any time, a flare-up can lead to a skin breaking and cracking. Imagine having a fall and scraping your knee and it doesn't heal for five years. In fact, the wound gets bigger. And many girls carry cosmetic pouches in their bag. I carry a first aid kit. And there was a period of time in my life for more than six months, I had no skin on either of my hands. They were covered with rashes and they flared out all the time and I had to cover them with bandages all every single day as I went to work. And the smell of undressing them at the end of the day was unbearable. It was depressing. And I like to say that, you know, I like to think that 30 years is a long time, long enough for me to find out, you know, all the different ways of uh, all the different ways to improve my health. But I realized that no matter what I do, I finally understood why nothing worked because everything fell within this category, whatever I did or wherever I went. Now consider what I might, what, you know, what if I told you that this solution comes in the form of clothing? That it is a high-tech fiber invented by the Japanese in the 1955. In 1955. And it's engineered to continually generate high levels of negative ions, powered only by static electricity. And by putting on this clothing, your body is in the environment of a forest or na natural environment. In fact, I'm wearing them right now. So, you know, today, today, right? In my short talk, I'm just here to share with everyone that we need to look beyond what we usually look at. Many people look at their diet and their physical activity, but keenly forgot about the environment around us. Just like how the outer space doesn't support life, our modern city living does not support healthy life. So we need to start asking ourselves new questions. We need to ask ourselves, what kind of environment are we interacting with? What kind of clothing do we wear? Where are they from and how are they made? What do you apply, spray, wash and wipe yourself with every single day? What detergent do you use to wash your clothing with? What upholstery and bedding do you use? And what furniture exists in your home? Because this one critical factor might change everything we know about health. Thank you very much.